The city locals claim to be the sporting capital of the world where too much sport is never enough. That's Melbourne, Australia. Here sports a religion. At the heart of it all is the monolithic MCG. 
the centrepiece of the 1956 Olympics, next door to the home of the Australian Open Tennis. And then there's the Australian Formula One Grand Prix at Albert Park. What a setting. Yes, Albert Park, that's where we are right now. Not for motor racing, but for international swimming. Welcome to the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre venue to the 16th FINA World Short Course Championships. It's Formula One swimming. 750 of the world's best swimmers with speed to burn. Six days of competition and we are right at the halfway point. Three days down and three great sessions of finals remaining. We've seen cheers and tears with world records tumbling and plenty to shout about from the home fans. The Australians having a great meet and uh, so too is this fellow, Chad Leclerc. We talk about cheers and tears. There were plenty for Chad last night from both Chad and his dad, Bert. Well, we've got a lot to look forward to. I'm Mike McCann. With me is uh, Bobby Hurley. We have uh, a total of eight finals to be decided this evening and two semi-finals or semi-finals in two events to take us through to the final let's have a look at the schedule first of all and we're going to start with a relay and this will be a beauty the mixed four by 50 meters freestyle relay so this is the quickest of all the relays freestyle two men two women a great opportunity for the um, smaller nations and they've gone through the heats this morning so that is the way we start. We'll have medal ceremonies along the way. The last of our finals will be the men's 4x200 metres freestyle. That is very open indeed. Before that, the women's 1500 metres. Fastest heat, which for all intents and purposes is the final. And uh, in all likelihood, the winner of that will be the gold medalist. Well, Bobby, welcome along. It was a terrific morning and uh, we've got a lot in store here. Yeah, there was no letting up for the swimmers on the fourth morning of heats here at the World Championships. Kate Douglas looked fantastic winning her heat this morning in the 200 breaststroke, as did Diaceto. He's going to have a good battle in that men's final next to the American Nick Fink. And uh, the women's splash and dash. Vasic there from Poland, but the super impressive Jordan Crooks was the fastest qualifier on the men's side. And we all will finish the night with the men's 4x200 freestyle relay. As we meet the officials uh, overseeing the meeting tonight, you're looking at uh, some of those events this evening, and uh, tell you what, the Americans uh, had a bit of a gold medal frenzy last night, and it could be the same again tonight. They've got a lot of chances as we head out to the call room, but in the first race, the women's, or the first individual, women's 200 breaststroke, King versus Douglas, Nick Fink in the 200 breast for men, Claire Curzon, uh, Ryan Murphy in the 50 back, Michael Andrews in the 100 individual medley, and then the relays could go either way. This fellow's had a fair bit to do with proceedings. What a magnificent performance we saw last night from Kyle Chalmers. Yeah, well, last night was one of the best nights of racing I've seen at the World Championships in the past five years since I began commentating. Just electrifying in so many events. The Australians started off with two gold medals in both the men's and women's 100 freestyle to kick out to a three gold medal lead over the United States team. That medal tally now, as we go over the halfway mark of the competition, is going to start to get a little bit more important. The United States responded to win five of the next six gold medals in those finals, and then Australia finished off with the men taking out the 4 by 50 So currently, right at the beginning of, uh, right at the middle of this competition, the United States have nine gold medals, Australia have eight, and they will face off in the middle of the pool in this mixed 4 by 53 the men's 50 back. We've got Cooper and Murphy side by side as well. Well, the first of the finals is not far away. The mixed 4 by 50 metres freestyle final where the USA hold the world record at 127.89. Melbourne, it's time for our first event of the evening, the mixed 4 by 50 meter freestyle relay final. In lane A, Petrota, Pachori, Alducini, Dominic Diamante, Team Brazil. Brazil start from lane 8. Pedro Spajari there, one of the fastest splits this morning. Baltuccini will swim third. In lane one, Matsui, Kawani, Igaharashi, Soma, Team Japan. Team Japan making a couple of changes from this morning. And they were the seventh quickest, so they have lane one. In lane seven, 
Swift, Gray, Moynihan, Godwin, Team New Zealand. Having a great competition is the team from New Zealand. Seven, swimming from lane seven, two silver medals already at these In championships. In lane two, Han, Wang, Wang, Lu. People's Republic of China. China out there in lane two after a qualifying time of 131.21. And to lead them off. In lane six, Andrew Curtis Brown Walsh, United States of America. They're going to be tough to beat. The United States, Michael Andrew leading them off. Alex Walsh there. In we'll lane three, home. Simons, DeVore, DeWar, Steenbergen. Team Netherlands. And when it comes to sprint relays, the Netherlands are always very, very tough to beat. In lane five, Chalmers, Temple, Harris, McKeon, Team Australia. What a team this is. Carl Chalmers will swim first. Temple, Harris and Emma McKeon on the anchor. And in lane four, Bruce Manadu, Castadello, and Nick. Team France. France coming in as the fastest qualifiers to be led off by Max Trousseau. And Melanie Henique will bring them home. What a way to start. First of the finals, the mixed 4 by 50 metres freestyle. France, the fastest qualifiers. Australia and the USA, 5 and 6. Well, this is going to be exciting. Chalmers leading off the Australians. He loves to chase. In this instance, he needs to give the Australians a big start. of the Netherlands, France in four, Chalmers away nicely for Australia. Yeah, four really strong teams in the middle of the pool here. Not much is going to split them, I think, through the first two legs until we see the women come through. There's that gold cap of Chalmers of Australia. Michael Andrew leading off strongly for Team USA. The USA off to a great start there in second place, France. Australia in third. It's now Curtis for the USA, Manadou for France and Temple Australia. Great changeover from Manadou. Now he's opening up a little bit of a gap now. That's point three, which is a huge lead in this relay. And the French women, they're really strong across the 50 freestyle. So France now Manadou heading up to Gastadello. We'll watch this changeover. She's got almost a body length. It was officially half a second between first and second. France it is who lead as they turn now at the far end. In second place, the Netherlands. Back to the USA and then Australia waiting for the final leg swimmers. Gassadello with a nice lead. France in front of that world record line. Melanie Hanique jumping in. Australia is well back with Emma McKeon. And the Netherlands are in second position. France it is, Hanique. Geez, he's got a massive lead. The danger is not the goal, but the world record. It's France in front. Australia moving into second place for McKeon. The Netherlands, but put the glasses down. Melanie Hanique has driven France to the world record. And the gold medal, of course. France gold. Australia silver and the Netherlands bronze. World record. France, they surprise everybody here tonight. And they're pumped. Gassadello, Hanique, Grousset, and Florent Manadou. We wouldn't have picked that coming into the championships. Australia had the star power, but it all came down to execution. Grousset had a nice lead off there, touching second behind the United States swimmer. But Manadou, that was the game changer on that second leg. Look at the underwater work from Hanique. We'll see her in the 50 freestyle still to come as well. That straight arm, powerful sprint freestyle technique. Gets the world record by some margin, half a second in front. The French team, they're celebrating in the stands already. 
We're only five minutes into the program. France smashing the world record by 0.56 of a second. Australia, the silver, the Netherlands, the bronze. A sensational way to start night four. United States off the podium. Well, what a way to start the night, ladies and gentlemen. A brand new world record for Team France. Yes. <laughs> Beryl, I'm going to come to you because that emotion is right there. You see, you can't believe it. It wasn't obviously something you were expecting to get heading into that race. We just wanted to have so much fun. That's what we did. And I told them we have an energy that no one else has. And I truly believe that tonight that's what makes the difference. I'm super proud of everyone. I mean, that was a team effort, guys. You all swam amazing legs. And I've got a little something for you. I'm going to give it to you, Florent. There you are. It's a check for $25,000, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for our new world champions, Team France. An amazing start to the competition this evening. Team France victorious in this mixed 4x50 metres freestyle relay. And Hennick, what a big finish it was. But to be fair, she would have done well to blow it from there. She had a big lead by the time she was diving in. So a real team effort. Another relay, another world record. Seems to be the norm here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Fast pool. I used to talk about fast pools. Not so much these days. I think they're all the same. Well, that's the fifth relay world record to go down. Amazing. First of the individual finals tonight. The women's 200 metres breaststroke. Rebecca Sony, the world record holder. 2009, 214.57. Let's meet them now. Introducing the final of the women's 200 meters breaststroke. In lane eight, representing Great Britain, Abby Wood. Here's Wood in eight, sixth in the 200 IM final. Moments ago. In lane one, representing Denmark, Pea Lomsterberg. Lomsterberg surprised in the heats this morning. 20 years of age, she was a semi finalist in the 100. In lane seven, representing Australia, Jenna Strauss. Jenna Strauss, the silver medalist from the World Championships in the long course pool this year. In so lane two, seven. representing People's Republic of Ta China, Tang Tianting. Tang back on track here. She was uh, disqualified in the 200 uh, semi final in Budapest. In lane six, representing Canada, Sydney Pickram. Sydney Pickram, bronze medal in this event back in 2019 at the World Champs. In lane three, representing Netherlands, Tess Schutten. Tess Schutten, 22 year old, silver medalist in the 100. In lane five, representing United States of America, Lily King. Here she is, Lily King, 100 meter champion from last night. In lane four, representing United States of America, Kate Douglas. Well, she was third at the Budapest World Championships, Douglas, and uh, she's taken gold here in the 200 individual medley. So it's the Americans, Douglas and King, the fastest times going into the final. The USA with a big chance here, Douglas in four, King in five, the women's 200 breaststroke final. King away well, lane five, the winner of the 100 last night, Douglas, her teammate alongside her there in lane number four. They're flanked by shooting in three and picked from down there in lane six. But look at Lily King go down the first lap. Yeah, well, watch for King and Douglas. 
They were by far the two best swimmers this morning through the heats. And King in great form here in Melbourne after winning the 100 breaststroke final last night. So she's going to swim this one out aggressively in front. And you can see just how much higher she sits in the water and how many more strokes she takes compared to her teammate Douglas there in the top of the yellow lanes. Douglas really glides out, only taking about six strokes per lap, whereas it always looks like Lily King's working a little bit harder on top of the water. So King it is who leads, but Tess Shooting right up there in lane number three. The Dutch swimmer, she was uh, second behind King in the 100, and uh, she's in the top three at the moment. Once again, we'll keep our eyes on that world record. The world record has stood for a long time now, 13 years in fact. Rebecca Sony of the United States. Yeah, they're only five one hundredths of a second on top of that world record. It's one of the oldest in the books from back in 2009. And Douglas has moved past King here now. So Douglas there in the top of the yellow lanes, just edging ahead of Lily King. Tess shooting from the Netherlands, not too far away either. She's swimming strongly in lane three. She's about 0.4 of a second behind our race leader here, Douglas. So she's trying to keep in touch. All the black caps there. It's Douglas in lane four leading King. And then it's shooting. And then you'd go back probably in fourth place, Schrosch. Monsterberg is right up there as well. And uh, then would follow Pickram, followed by Tang and Wood. Yeah, that world well, record line creeps away, but this is where the race will get interesting. Douglas hits the lead, but King's got the ability to change speed. She can really lift her stroke rate. And we know how much of a good racer Lily King is. So they turn now to bring it home. And look at Douglas. They're not going to catch Douglas. Lily King is out after her. Shooting, trying to hold on to third. And this is a very impressive win to Douglas. Kate Douglas in a championship record time, 2.15.77. It's a gold medal for the United States. Gold and silver, in fact. King home second in shooting third. Kate Douglas takes her second gold medal of these championships. Double world champion, 200 IM, and now the 200 breaststroke. And she kicked away on that last 50 metres. What a smooth stroke she has. One of the most versatile swimmers in the world. One of the most versatile in history. She anchored the women's 4x50 free relay home to gold last night. 53 now into the 200 breaststroke. She could have almost raced in the 53. Sammy's coming up, but she chooses this 200 breaststroke event. She won a medal in Budapest in the long course version when King won gold. She gets revenge now. Kate Douglas taking the title here in Melbourne. There's the official result. Douglas from King and Shooting. So it went with the seedings, lanes four from five and three. Well done, Kate Douglas. The championship record time. Breaking the mark held by Ricky Pedersen of Denmark 10 years ago. Well, Kate, congratulations. You did it in the 2am, but you're back here again for the, the two breast. That's your second individual world championship title of the week. How are the legs feeling? Yeah, that one definitely hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but that was an awesome race, and I definitely think um, my success in 200 IM helped my confidence going into that race. Yeah. And I mean, I, what I find so impressive about watching you race, you had the, you know, an amazing split in the 53 relay last night, and then you come out and do a two breast. It's like you can swim anything. You're so versatile. Do you have a favorite? Um, I mean, I do love the 53. That's a fun race. <laughs> Over and done in seconds. Yeah, and you were racing alongside Lily King. It was an amazing race from her as well. It, it, Team USA has been smashing it this week. It's got to be awesome to be a part of that. Yeah, no, it's awesome to, you know, be able to add to the medal count now and to be able to race next to Lily and get gold and silver together. It's awesome. Love to see it. Well, look, I cannot wait to see what you do over the rest of the week. She did amazing. A new championship record, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for your new world champion, Kate Douglas. So Kate Douglas adds to the medal hall for the United States. That is gold medal number 10. And in the second half of the race, she was just too strong for Lily King. Yeah, she really accelerated away, but it was such a smooth stroke that it almost happens without noticing. And uh, 
I'd love to see her in the 100 breaststroke. She, as she said, her favorite event's the 53. She's got range to the 200s. You'd think she could do 100 free, 100 breast, 100 IM. That would have been interesting. And uh, two gold medals in Melbourne individually. And one gold medal in the mixed relay last night as well. So now we move along to the men's 200 metres breaststroke final. And uh, this world record has stood since 2018. Kirill Brigoda. Should be a great race. Melbourne, please welcome the swimmers in the final of the men's 200 metre breaststroke. In lane eight, representing Brazil, Caio Pumputis. Here's Caio Pumputis, the 23 year old Brazilian finalist in Abu Dhabi last year. In lane one, representing Germany, Marco Kahn. And uh, Marco Koch was uh, the winner in Windsor 2016, six years ago. He followed up with a bronze medal in China in 2018. In lane seven, representing Sweden, Eric Persson. Here's Eric Persson, fourth last year in Abu Dhabi, looking for his first world championship medal. In lane two, representing France, Antoine Vicarat. So uh, here is Vicarat, the 24-year-old Frenchman. Semi-finalist at the Tokyo Olympics. In lane six, representing People's Republic of China, Chin Haiyan. He's Chin from China, silver medalist at the 2018 edition of these World Championships. In lane three, representing Japan, Watanabe Ipe. Now, Watanabe. Sixth in the Tokyo Olympic final. He was a bronze medalist when the long course championships were held in Korea in 2019. In lane five, representing United States of America, Nick Fink. Champion from the 100 last night, Nick Fink, defending champion in the 200 meter distance. In lane four, representing Japan, Seto Daya. And Seto, at 28 years of age, an absolute superstar of the sport. Seven gold, five silver, and three bronze at the World Short Course Championships. Starting a warm favourite, a warm favourite over Fink. But Fink is the defending champion. Here's the field for the men's 200 metres breaststroke. Seto. Japan, Fink, the United States, who won the title 12 months ago in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, Fink's the defending champion, but there's five swimmers in this field that have personal best times faster than what he swam in Abu Dhabi last year. So he's got his work cut out for him. If he wants to defend the two Japanese swimmers, Watanabe and Seto, fastest two swimmers in the world this year. Meters breaststroke final underway with Seto of Japan, the 28 year old in lane four, and Nick Fink, who won the hundred. He is there in lane number five, and uh, good start it is for Fink, also Chin. But the first through the 50 was Vicarat from lane two. Yeah, most of these swimmers are 200 meter breaststroke specialists, except for Fink, who has won world titles in the 50 and the 100 over the course of his career. So most of them. Well, we back half swimmers in this event. Fink's the one capable of taking it out quick, but at the moment, it's uh, Kin from China that seems to be moving the best through the first 75. A long way to go here. They'll really try and swim efficiently through the first four laps and build that third 50 metres before it. It's going to look like it's going to be an all-out war on the last 50. It's Chin in six. Seto now moving through the IM specialist. It will be Seto at the 100. Yes, he uh, had a very good 25 there, Seto. So he's taken over the lead from Kin. And then back there in third would be the other Japanese swimmer in lane number three, Watanabe, who's right up there in the mix. Fink's got a bit of work to do at this stage. 
Yeah, Fink does. There he is in the bottom of the yellow lane, sitting at third position right now. But Seto has just got monster pullouts on him. He's got a body length lead at the moment. Fink trying to increase his stroke right now. Fink moving through to second position. But Seto, he just shades that world record line, 0.6. It's not too far away, but more importantly, he's got a 0.8 lead over Nick Fink. Oh, he's looking good. He's looking strong. He's extending this lead with three quarters of a length now as uh, they turn with 25 to go. The margin, eight tenths of a second. In second place, it's Fink and then King. But they are after set out to no avail. This is going to be a glorious Japanese victory here in Melbourne. And it's not far outside the world record. Seto, King, King, winning time here, 20035. He's missed out on the world record by 19 hundredths of a second. What a performance. Dai Seto, 2 minutes 0.35. We've never seen him race individual breaststroke at the World Championships before. He's shifted his focus at this point of his career. Going into his third Olympics now. Medalist in the 200 butterfly last night. Now wins the 200 breaststroke. What range he has. Underwater shot there. Beautiful high elbow catch. And he's the shortest swimmer in the field, but he had the best pullouts. Super explosive. And he really kicked away at the end. He wins by well over a second ahead of the defending champion, Fink. And he was charging on that world record line. Watch out for that over the next couple of years. And word coming through disqualification. It doesn't, up, doesn't upset the uh, overall standings, but uh, Pamputis, lane eight disqualified, is the word that's filtered through here. There's the result. Pamputis out, but more importantly, Seto from Fink and Jin. That is gold, silver, and bronze. Japan, the USA, and China. Congratulations, Daya. Uh, your first world title at this meet and the first in the 200 breast. 200, that's rapid. Yes, I'm big surprise. Big surprise. Yes. Yeah. And very happy to obviously get your first world title at this meet, yeah? Good Australian crowd? Yes, uh, my event, my main event is tomorrow, 400 a.m. Yes. So I, I'll be... Hopefully just as fast in that, right? He's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dio Sector. His main event comes tomorrow. He is the world record holder in the 400 IM as well. Extremely versatile. He's been winning gold medals at the Short Course World Championship since 2012. So he's got the longevity. And I don't reckon he's... Uh contemplating retirement just yet of course Tokyo holding the Olympics last year and next year Fukuoka holding the long course world championships but he happening for De Aceto in his home waters what eight years of age still going strong gold tonight and uh, such versatility of course goes without saying in some ways, being a medley swimmer, you need uh, no weaknesses and he'll be the favourite tomorrow night for 400 individual medley. Great start, France, the United States and Japan taking the first three gold medals. Of course we've got to award the medals as well, a medal ceremony. The, the first medal ceremony up. for the mixed 4 by 50 metre freestyle relay. The medals will be presented by World Aquatics Bureau member, Mr. Algernon Cargill. World Aquatics Bureau member, Mr. Varendra Nanavati. Melbourne 2022 Organising Committee Executive General Manager, Commercial and Marketing, Ms. Jody Hawkins. Winners of the bronze medal, Netherlands. Kenzo Simmons, Tom DeBoer, Micah DeWard, Marit Steenbergen. Winners of the silver medal, 
Australia. <laughs> Kyle Chalmers, Matthew Temple, Meg Harris, Emma McKeon. World champions and winners of the gold medal with a new world record, France. Maxim Grusset, Florent Manitou, Beryl Gastadeo, Melanie Henny. An amazing performance by France. 127.33, breaking the mark set by the United States in Hangzhou, China. In December 2018, that was 127.89, so a margin of 56 hundredths of a second. It doesn't sound a lot, but in swimming terms, it's huge. Well, as you said, the race only goes for less than 100 seconds. And uh, less than 90 seconds, in fact. Manadu there, splitting 20.2 to open it up. Their changeovers were so good as well. All under 0.15 of a second. And uh, execution in these 4 by 50 meter relays is the number one thing. And the French, they really nailed that tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of France. rendition of the French national anthem, this impressive French quartet in the water, and perhaps they could go out busking at South Bank once the competition's over. They really got into the national anthem. Why wouldn't you? A world record like that. 127.33 to France to take the gold medal from Australia, the silver, from the Netherlands, the bronze. I'm pretty sure you're the man with the stats there, Bobby. I'm pretty sure that's the first medal for France here at the World Championships in Melbourne. It's definitely the first gold medal for the French team. They've uh, Rousseau got the silver last night, 100 yeah. free. Yeah, they picked up swimming the well, yeah. and uh, maybe it was Hanik in that 50 fly, but Manadu looking relaxed there. We will see him line up in the 50 freestyle semi-finals. Semi-final one, he's in right next to Kyle Chalmers. Some big boys coming out in that sprint. Freestyle Grusso will be there as well. And uh, they've really picked things up over the last 12 months, the French team, on the way to, obviously, a home Olympics, which is less than two years away now. We've got a new national team director. That's Jakob Aharen, the Dutch native that served time as the Australian team national director as well. Got things back on track down under. And he's done the same again over in France. And the heat swimmers joining them. That's good. Can't That's... do it without the efforts of the heat swimmers to get them into the final. Lane four in the final in the first place. Oh, That's so valuable for, for team morale. The recognition there in front of the team, obviously not a whole lot of French fans travelling all the way to Melbourne, but to do that in the team environment, breaking the world record, 
and uh, capturing those moments. It's uh, really good images there to see. And Manadu onto his fourth Olympics now. He's medaled in the 53 in the past three. He's become, after a brief retirement, a real leader of the French team, of course, and happy to put himself out there and do his job in and out of the pool. Well, it was an exciting way to start night four of competition, a six-day competition, world records every night. The relays doing the job. Yes, the swimmers certainly enjoying the pool here, but probably the conditions, which they were a bit blowy in the first couple of days, but the times were still slick and uh, it's quite balmy this evening and uh, of course the French were able to lower a world record under these conditions but I don't know what the reason is but the records keep on tumbling. Yeah they certainly do. They seem to get faster and faster every year of course records were meant to be broken. There's a move to the call room now. Women's 50 backstroke final coming up. There's Louise Hansen getting activated. Two Swedish swimmers in the final. Molly O'Callaghan there looking relaxed. The Canadians are going to be tough to beat. McNeil is the world record holder in this backstroke event. Claire Curzon, so the United States with uh, a gold already through Kate Douglas this evening. And uh, Claire Curzon has a big chance here, but uh, as you mentioned, McNeil, the defending champion, going to be an excellent race this one as they all are the women's 50 meters backstroke final is next on the agenda Maggie McNeil is in the final the world record holder it's time for our next final the women's 50 meter backstroke in lane eight representing Netherlands Micah to war toward in eight she has 10 medals in the Short Course World Championships, all coming from relays. Swimming in lane one, representing Denmark, Yuli Kepiesen. Jensen swam at the Olympic Games in Tokyo in the 53. She made it through to the semis. In lane seven, representing Sweden, Hannah Rosvall. Also a Tokyo semi-finalist. This is Hannah Rosvall from Sweden in seven. In lane two, representing Sweden, Louise Hansen. And Louise Hansen, bronze medalist at the last championships in Abu Dhabi, a three-time world short course champion throughout other events. In lane six, representing Canada, Kylie Ma. Kylie Ma, long course world champion this year, silver medalist in this event in Abu Dhabi. In lane three, representing Australia, Molly. Oh. Molly O'Callaghan, she's collected relay gold. She was second in the 100. Lane three. In lane five, representing Canada, Maggie McNeil. World record holder, Maggie McNeil. World champion in the 50 flight. She is the fastest underwater kicker in this field. And in lane four, representing United States of America, Claire Kirsten. And Claire Curzon. In lane number four, she won two golds at the Budapest World Long Course Championships back in July. So Curzon, 18-year-old, two 18-year-olds. Curzon of the United States, McNeil of Canada in lanes four and five, the women's 50 metres backstroke final. 18 year olds, Curzon and O'Callaghan, four and three. Yeah, this one will be all underwater. We've got four of the six fastest women in history lining up behind the blocks.
Thank you, Amar. Away they go, even start there. Curzon and McNeil in four and five. O'Callaghan comes up, but coming up first, it's McNeil. Great start for the Canadian in the red there. As she turns at the halfway, it's McNeil in front, joint second, O'Callaghan and Curzon a quarter of a second away. As they bring it home, Maggie McNeil is surging towards a gold medal. Maybe a world record. It is McNeil in a world record time. Maggie McNeil, 25-25, lowers the world mark. Second gold medal of the meet, Maggie McNeil, world record in the women's 50 backstroke. She is the fastest underwater kicker in history. What a start and turn that was. There she's in that red suit. Not a traditional backstroke as she struggles on top of the surface. She's a butterfly specialist, but look at this. There she is at the top of the red suits. She got about almost a full body length off that first 15 metres. They swam up to her on the turn, but she put him away underwater. Curzon was charging home. Couldn't quite get there, and McNeil busts her own world record. The first individual world record of the championships. Curzon taking silver, O'Callaghan the bronze. The result of the 50 back, a world record, the first individual world record of the championships. Maggie McNeil of Canada lowering her own mark, 25-25. Curzon the silver, O'Callaghan the bronze. Well, I tell you what, I just said to Maggie, she's having a great week. She went, yeah, it's been pretty good. Maggie, la a year ago today, you broke the world record in this event. It was your first ever world record. You've done it again in the same event. I know you were surprised last year it was in backstroke. It's obviously a good one for you. Yeah, I guess apparently. I mean, my backstroke's felt kind of off the last couple months, but I'm really glad to see that I'm improving in it. Yeah. And I mean, everything has to come together in a 50. You know, your starts, your swim, your turns, underwater, all of that. How do you make sure that happens when it counts? Um, just, <laughs> most of it's practice, but there's a little bit of luck involved, I would say. Well, I tell you what, you were lucky today, wasn't you, ladies and gentlemen? You got yourself a check for $25,000 and a new world record. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Maggie McNeil. <laughs> the world record for Maggie McNeil, breaking her own mark by two one hundredths of a second. And 25,000 US dollars to boot, and that'll be even more in Canadian dollars. Nice evening's work. She can spend that in Australia. Good exchange rate at the moment. Down under. Holly Maas, teammate and best friend of McNeil. Next up, the men's 50 metres backstroke. And uh, Manadou's world record has stood since 2014. It's all the twos. Now it's the men's turn for the 50 metre backstroke final. Swimming in lane eight, representing Greece, Apostolos Christou. Apostolos Christou, he had to win a swim off this morning to compete in this final. He's the eighth fastest qualifier. In lane one, representing Germany, Marek Ulrich. Ulrich, a semi-finalist in the 100 in Tokyo, swimming out of lane one. In lane seven, representing Italy, Lorenzo Mora. Focused. Lorenzo Moore, a silver medalist in the 100 backstroke. Silver in this event in Abu Dhabi. In lane two, representing Trinidad and Tobago, Dylan Carter. Oh, Dylan Carter, excellent form on the FEMA World Cup circuit. Three from three in this event. In lane six, representing South Africa, Peter Kosti. The 18 year old Peter Kosti, Commonwealth champion in the 100 meter distance. In lane three, representing Poland, Kasper Stokowski. Stokowski set a championship record in the heats. He went even quicker in the semis. In lane five, representing United States of America, Ryan Murphy. Murphy's been in great form here in Melbourne. Winner of the 100 backstroke. And in lane four, representing Australia, Isaac Allen Hoover. 
18 years of age. Cooper is having a sensational meet, bronze in the 100, and he set a world junior record in this event in the semis. Murphy going in with the fastest time. Rather, Cooper, I should say, over Murphy, but Murphy with all the experience. The men's 50 backstroke final. Cooper, the fastest qualifier, the teenager from Australia. Murphy, the experienced American in five. Yeah, almost 10 years in age separates them, but Cooper looking like a veteran out there, taking their time, making the other guys wait in the cold, cold air of Melbourne. There's Cooper and Murphy. Just regarding the world record, officially it's still 22-22. I mentioned earlier for Manadu, there is an unratified world mark though, 22-11. So bear that in mind, an unratified new world mark, They're not going to hear that. Murphy's well, still going for it. That's very unusual. There's no 15-metre rope either to drop off. We've got a problem here. We've got a problem, Houston. Let's see what happens anyway. Cooper looks like he's slightly ahead there. It's, of course, not going to count. 22.49 for Cooper comes up on our screens. <laughs> and they are That's a wiser. shock. They are none the wiser, but they've just... I've never heard that sound come after the starter's gun at a World Championship level before, so I don't know if the start looked clean to me. So I don't know if that's, if that's a technical difficulty or if somebody did move, but you know, the, the guys actually swam 50 metres here. They're going to need a rest. They can't rerun this race immediately. They're going to have to give these guys time to rest and recover. And, of course, some of them... Didn't even Where's swim it. That's right. Where's the I remember we had a similar situation in Brisbane at the Australian trials back in the mid 90s. Michael oh. Klim. Well, in the mid 90s, there was a two start rule. This is the start. It looks, well, Mur there's a bit of head movement there from Murphy, but they don't normally come in with that second sound. To, to stop the race. Normally they would let the race go and Murphy would be disqualified. I don't think Murphy got, got disqualified. I don't think he moved before the gun. I just don't understand why, why that second sound activated once they started. So 50 backstroke at the world level this year. Hasn't that caused some controversy? He did get beaten, Murphy, as well. Well, I took my eyes off the race, I've got to say, because I thought surely these guys are going to realise and slow it down. Well, they're on their back, and the four swimmers in the middle of the pool went for it, so they're not really going to notice to, to just pull up, and it's a 50-metre event. You, you've got to commit to, to the race. Um, here it is again. I, just, I don't think Murphy Fall started. I think he was quick off the blocks. Obviously, the four swimmers in the middle didn't hear anything. Cooper did, assuming that they were all going 100%. Cooper got his hand on the wall first in a PB in World Junior Record time, 22.49. They were really, truly trying. Would have been an exciting final, and we're waiting here to hear what the official word is as to What's going to happen to the outcome of this? Is anyone going to get disqualified? And, and when are they actually going to rerun this final? Well, I was wondering if they're going to delay it 24 hours. You know what? There was a three-way swim-off to get into the final. If somebody does get disqualified, I wonder if they'll put the bloke that lost the swim-off this morning in. Which I was. Feel, I just feel sorry for the person who was going to present the medals in this. He's got no idea what's happening. And look, that... That sounds like an in-joke, but Bobby Hurley alongside me was listed to present the medal, so uh, 
Bobby's all dressed up to the nines and doesn't know what he's doing. But I think the swimmers have bigger problems. Just back on what I was mentioning before in Brisbane all those years ago, it, was, it may have been Jeff Hugel, it was either Michael Klim or Jeff Hugel, there was a false start, but they didn't hear it until they got to the far end of the 50 metre pool and the, the rope had dropped. But, but interestingly, there was a world record when they restarted it. They had the adrenaline going, it was a world mark. Let's pause now for a women's 200 metres breaststroke medal ceremony. The medal ceremony for the women's 200 metre breaststroke. The medals will be presented by World Aquatics Executive Committee member, Mr. Eric Van Heiningham. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Netherlands, Tess Schuten. Tess Schuten with this wonderful swim, taking bronze. Winner of the silver medal, representing United States of America, Lily King. Bronze to shoot silver. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing United States of America, Kate Douglas. And Kate Douglas, a championship record tie. Gold medal here to add to the bronze. She won the Long Course World Titles in Budapest. Shoot in there with a great performance. Her first individual medal at the world stage. On the podium now with couple of heavy hitters in women's breaststroke. Lily King, silver medal there to add to her gold last night in the 100. She's going to be right in the mix in the 50 breaststroke and of course a key leg on the United States medley relay which will come on the last night of competition and here's the world champion, dual world champion now, Kate Douglas, 200 individual medley and 200 metres breaststroke be hunting down that world record in the next couple of years still only 21 definitely got her best swimming in front ladies of ladies and gentlemen the national anthem of united states of america Douglas gets her gold medal. This continues a good run for the United States in this event. Douglas the gold, King the silver, and Shooten the bronze. Emily Escobedo won it in Abu Dhabi 12 months ago. Before that, Annie Laser won in Hangzhou in 2018. Three in a row for the United States in this 200 metres breaststroke for women. Three different winners as well. Mm. That's got to be a, a rarity. And uh, Laser is here, swimming the shorter distances now. Escobedo, the defending champion, not here in Melbourne. And uh, some new medal winners here. Douglas and King, we've seen them frequently. And Shooten getting her first individual medal at the World Championships and uh, contributing to a really 
strong performance from the Dutch team so far. A bit of a changing of the guard of late, it's definitely due to that retirement of Renomi Kroman with Jojo 12 months ago. And this is how Douglas did it as we relive some of that uh, victory. Now back to the men's 50 metres backstroke final though that was aborted a moment ago. The word is that that will be staged later tonight. It will be today. It'll be fitted into the program somewhere. But in the meantime, we move along to the semi-finals of the women's 53. Our next event of the evening, the women's 50 meter freestyle semi-finals. In lane eight, representing South Africa, Caitlin Delange. Here's Delange. The 18-year-old from South Africa, making her world championship debut here in Melbourne. In lane one, representing Netherlands, Kim Bush. Kim Bush, the 24-year-old from the Netherlands, she's won one gold, six silver and five bronze at short course world championships. In lane seven, representing Netherlands, Valerie Van Bruun. Van Bruun swimming out of lane seven, bronze medalist earlier this week in the 4x50 free relay. In lane two, representing United States of America, Claire Kurzan. And Claire Kurzan's back in the pool here. She made the final in Abu Dhabi as a 17-year-old. She finished sixth. In lane six, representing United States of America, Erica Brown. Erica Brown, already two golds here in Melbourne in the relays. In lane three, representing Australia, Emma McKeon. The winner of the 100. And of course, a key member of the gold medal winning 4x100 freestyle relay. In lane five, representing Great Britain, Anna Hopkin. Anna Hopkin from Great Britain, Olympic champion in the And in lane four, relay. representing Australia, Meg Heron. And Meg Harris in lane four, claiming bronze in Budapest. And a member of that winning relay team I spoke about a moment ago. The semi final number one of the women's 53. Harris, McKeon, four and three, the Australians alongside each other, Hopkin in five for Great Britain. McKeon, 28 years of age and in the prime of her life. She first competed at Worlds back in 2010. And this is the first time she's been back. Away, good start lane two, Curzon, McKeon alongside her, Harrison Hopkin in the middle as they head down to first laps. What a good start this is by Harris. Harris flying down there, McKeon as well. McKeon actually leads them through, so it's McKeon in front. They'll come out and out, and the red cap is Hopkin. McKeon's going to be too strong. She takes it out, Hopkin and Harris. 51 for Emma McKeon. Safely through to the final. Yeah, so well executed there from McKeon. Just nails the details. Dive, turn, no breathing at all in the 50. This was the turn. Harris missed the start, but she does swim well on that second 25 metres. Hopkin was thereabouts as well in the red cap with McKeon. 3-5-1, almost a personal best there. As you mentioned, made her debut at this meet 12 years ago in Dubai. Still going strong is Emma McKeon. And this is her partner there, Cody Simpson. Back in the pool after enjoying a successful music career in the US. Result of semi-final one. McKeon from Hopkin and Harris, 23-51, the winning time. It 
let's uh, move along now to semi-final number two. Introducing the swimmers in the second semi-final of the women's 50-meter freestyle. Swimming in lane eight, representing New Zealand, Rebecca Monaghan. Monaghan from New Zealand. She finished 28 in this event four years ago. Now she's in the semis. In lane one, representing People's Republic of China, Wu Qing Fan. Wu Qing Fan of China, 19 years of age. She swam at the Tokyo Olympics. She made the final, finished in equal fifth place. In, in lane place. seven, representing Czech Republic, Barbara Semenova. Here's Semenova. Where's the longer distance? Restyles 100 and 200, but she's in lane, lane two, seven representing now. Slovenia, Nisa Panther. Up of Slovenia. She was uh, 19th in Budapest, missing out on the semis. In lane six, representing Sweden, Michelle Coleman. Here's Coleman from Sweden, three time Olympian, semi finalist last in year. In lane three, representing France, Melanie Anik. Anik in lane number three here, semi finalist in Tokyo. In lane five, representing Denmark, Julie Kep Jensen. Julie Jensen from Denmark, finalist in Hungary in the long course, 50 freestyle. And in lane four, representing Poland, Karazina Vasic. So Vasic in lane number four, also tying for fifth in Tokyo, along with Wu, who's swimming out of lane number one here. Vasic third in Abu Dhabi 12 months ago. Final two looking like this with Poland and Denmark, four and five, Basik and Jensen. Henrique of France and Coleman, Sweden, three and six. Basik's been in fine form this year. 30s of age, person of best times. Jensen as well, swimming strongly. Henrique. Fresh off her gold in the relay earlier tonight. Two 30 year olds in the semi, Henrik and Basik, and a 29 year old as well. Coleman. Quickly off the blocks, there was Henik in lane number three, Varsik in four, Jensen in five, and going nicely early, Coleman off to a slippery start down there in lane number six, but as they turn, it's back in the middle of the pool. Varsik in front of Jensen, and they are bringing it home now, with Varsik clearing away. Good push off the wall. It won't be a world record, but uh, she'll win it pretty convincingly. Coleman second, and Jensen there in third place. The winning time here, 23.37. 23.37. Yeah, nice performance there from Varsic. Quicker than what we saw from McKeon in semi-final one. So she'll move through as the fastest qualifier for the final. There she is in four. Jensen was quick off the blocks next to her. Henik also had a great first 25 metres. But Varsic, six foot tall. Wow, look how deep Henik goes underwater. Vasic came up, used the power that she's got on top of the water to stroke out and touch first. She's been as fast as 23.10.
Next up, uh, we have another medal ceremony coming up, the men's 200 metres breaststroke. The medal ceremony for the men's 200 metre breaststroke. The medals will be presented by World Aquatics Bureau member, Mr. Mohammed Deal. Winner of the bronze medal, representing People's Republic of China, King Haiyang. Winner of the silver medal, representing United States of America, Nick Fink. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Japan, Daya Seto. So Daya Seto, to the acclaim of the fans here, announced as the winner of the gold medal, 200 metres press stroke for men. Gold medal number eight at World Short Course Championships for Seto. And that takes his overall tally to 16. Kim taking the bronze after his silver four years ago. Fink. Gold last year in Abu Dhabi. Gold last night in the 100. Settles for silver in the longer breaststroke event. And well, what more can we say about Seto? 400 IM world record holder, former 200 fly world record holder. He's got range that is not so common at this level. He almost breaks the world record in the 200 breaststroke. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Japan. for his country, joining Nao Tomita, who won in Dubai in 2010, the only winners from Japan in this 200 metres breaststroke. 20035, 201.6 and 202.22, first, second and third. Of course, we're still waiting on an event that uh, was aborted, but uh, that situation will be rectified later on. I'm talking about the men's 50 metres backstroke. There was a, a problem there, and uh, the news is that we will have that race in round about an hour from now. So it will be staged this evening. Yeah, it's been officially ruled a starting error in the men's 50 backstroke final. So it'll be right, it'll be re-swum in about 30 minutes from now, which is interesting because Dylan Carter, one of the swimmers in the 50 backstroke final competing for a medal, is a legitimate chance in this one. Carter has got the 50 freestyle in the next, in the next race. He's got the 50 free semis now. So he's got to race a semi before he gets his 50 backstroke final. And Cito winning again, as I mentioned, he's got some collection here of uh, medals at World Championships, 28 years of age, 29 by the time the long course championships come around to Fukuoka. And 
and uh, no doubt he will be prominent there. He'll be prominent tomorrow night as well in the 400 individual medley. So this is what happened a short time ago. And we have swimmers in four of the lanes who didn't know about it. In fact, make it five of the lanes, and they went through the whole of the race not knowing that uh, effectively the race had been called off. The news, as we indicated, is that the race will be swum in uh, about half an hour from now, ironically at the time set down for the medal presentation. So uh, it will be held, and we have been informed the problem was it was human error, quite frankly, human error by the starter. That's been acknowledged, and uh, it's unfortunate. You can only feel for the starter, you feel for the swimmers as well. So that's happening in about 50, uh, 30 minutes from now. Before that, the men's 50 metres freestyle semi-finals coming your way. It's time for the men's semi-final of the 50 metre freestyle. Swimming in lane eight, representing Singapore, Tiong Zinwei. Semi-final one, Zinwei Tiong from Singapore. He was electrifying in the 50 fly final earlier Swimming this week. Swimming in lane one, representing Italy, Leonardo De Plano. De Plano just missed the final in the Abu Dhabi. He had the ninth quickest time. In lane seven, representing Japan, Matsui Kosuki. He's a Japanese swimmer, Matsui. He's let off a couple of relays this week in five. In lane fashion. two, representing France, Maxime Grosset. So already with a gold medal this evening in that uh, mixed but the 4 by 50 metres freestyle relay. He'll be feeling pretty good about himself, second in the 100. In lane six, representing Australia, Kyle Tomer. Here he is, winner of the 100 last night. Kyle Chalmers having a great week in Melbourne. In lane three, representing Great Britain, Lewis Edward Burroughs. Burroughs made the Budapest final, he finished seventh. He was the silver medalist in the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. In lane five, representing France, Florent Manatou. Already a gold medalist tonight, world record holder as well, Florent Manadou. He's the championship record holder in this event. In lane four, representing Trinidad and Tobago, Dylan Carter. And Dylan Carter in lane number four here, fourth in the Commonwealth Games, the dominant performance in this stroke in the FINA World Cup, along with two others. Semi-final one, the men's 50 freestyle, Carter, Trinidad and Tobago in four, and Manadou and Grosset, already gold medalists in the mixed relay this evening. They're in five and two respectively. Carter in four, he was in that 50 backstroke final that was aborted, but he was one of the swimmers that stopped after the start, so he won't be physically tired here, but mentally he's got to make sure he's switched on and focused on this semi. Kyle Chalmers, lane six, winner of the 100. Barros, lane three. Carter and Manadou, nothing between them. The start, Chalmers down there in lane six. Big start there by Jong in lane number eight. But as they turn at the halfway point, it's Manadou in front, Carter in second. Then Chalmers back there in fourth as they bring it home. Chalmers finishing hard. It's lane number four, though, Carter. Oh, no, Chalmers got there. Chalmers. Magnificent finish, the last couple of strokes, and he's power to a win this semi-final. 20.91 by three one hundredths of a second over Barris and Carter, who tied for second. He is the ultimate racer, Kyle Chalmers. 
breathing twos in the 50 freestyle, unheard of. There he is on the right of screen, gold cap. Carter and Manadu were good off the start, but Chalmers much improved off the turn. This was it, coming off the wall there. A lot of breathing for the Australian. Carter stayed underwater. Here's the finish, just six one hundredths of a second separated the top five, nothing in it. But in that situation, you can trust Chalmers to set the touchpad off first. Looking at the replay, I still thought it was Carter. But uh, Carter, three one hundredths of a second back there, same time as Barris. Magnificent performance by Kyle Chalmers, 20.91. So that was semi-final one. Let's have a look at semi-final two now. Introducing our second semi-final in the men's 50 meter freestyle. In lane eight, representing Slovakia, Dusa Matej. Dusa from Slovakia in lane eight. 22 years of age, personal best time this morning. In lane one, representing Greece, Christian Golome. Golome for 29 years of age, tied for fifth at the Tokyo Olympics in the 53. In lane seven, representing Italy, Alessandro Moresi. Six foot eight, Moresi led off the Italian squad to a world record in the 4x100 freestyle relay. In lane two, representing Ukraine, Vladislav Bukov. Bukov at 20 years of age, a former world junior champion. He's got a best of 21-13. In lane six, representing Hungary, Sebastian Sabo. Sabo, 50 fly world record holder, has a personal best of 20.7. In lane three, representing Hong Kong, China, Ian Ho. Ho of China at 25 years of age, appearing at his second World Short Course Championships. In lane five, representing Great Britain, Benjamin Proud. Benjamin Proud, undefeated in this event for 12 months. He's got the long course and, world, and short course world titles and the Commonwealth title. One In lane four, year. representing Cayman Islands, Jordan Crooks. And Jordan Crooks from the Cayman Islands. How about this? He's been in scintillating form. <laughs> Semi-final two. Ho of Hong Kong, Crooks the Cayman Islands, proud of Great Britain and Zabo of Hungary. Three, four, five, and six. We're getting used to seeing Crooks swim in our lane four. He's lightning fast off the start and the turn. Proud to be right there with him. Cap the defending champion Crooks, who's taken it all before him in the World Cup circuit. As they head down there, proud off to a beauty as he turns now. Crooks just in front of Zabo and then proud. Back they come. Look underwater work there from Crooks, and he's flying down. It might almost be a world record. Sensational performance by Crooks. Proud second of Zabo third. Oh, he mopped it off the wall as if it was a trampoline. They're holding their jaws here in Melbourne. The man from the Cayman Islands, 20.31. It proves from his swim this morning. And he did it all on the second 25. Off the blocks, not much separated them. Proud was good off the start as we're used to seeing, but into the turn, Proud didn't have a good push off the wall. Might have just missed the jump. Crooks underwater, no one can match him in this event. And look at him, swims so long with that stroke, almost hooking into the, oh, jammed up on the finish too. He is going to be tough to beat tomorrow. 
20.3. Chalmers won the previous semi-final in 20.9. That's almost the body length. So he's now 15 one hundredths in a second outside the world record. Jordan Crooks of the Cayman Islands successful in semi-final two from Proud and Zabo. Ho of Hong Kong four. Jordan Crooks is going to be very hard to beat and create history for the Cayman Islands. Proud, Zabo, Chalmers, Barris, Carter, Manadou and Grosse. Ninth is Ho of Hong Kong, 21.04. Well, you have to go 20 seconds in the 50 freestyle to make the final. I don't think that's ever happened before. 21.04 misses out for Ian Ho. He did go 20.9 this morning to break the Hong Kong record. It's time to pause and draw breath with the medal ceremony, the women's 50 metres backstroke. The medal ceremony for the women's 50 metre backstroke. The medals will be presented by Chair, Victoria 2026 Organising Committee, Miss Peggy O'Neill. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Australia, Molly O'Callaghan. Molly O'Callaghan for the bronze, 25-61. Winner of the silver medal, representing United States of America, Claire Curzon. Claire Curzon keeps winning medals this time at silver. World champion and winner of the gold medal, in a new world record time, representing Canada, Maggie McNeil. A world record to go with the gold medal for Maggie McNeil. of Canada. That's two in a row now for Maggie McDeal, having won 12 months ago in Abu Dhabi. And she is uh, really forging a big, big reputation in terms of international swimming here. A world record, breaking her own world record by two one hundredths of a second. She's not a big girl, but she certainly packs some power. She's tiny, in fact. It's a short podium, but... 50 backstroke, pretty much known as the race that determines the fastest underwater kicker in the world. McNeil certainly prides herself on that. Two in a row, as you mentioned, both in world record time, and 
She doesn't race long course backstroke at all. She needs that turn. She needs the underwater. You can see them chasing her down. She prefers a long course butterfly. But when it comes to short course racing, untouchable. She can do the short course 50 freestyle as well. Still races in the college system over in the US with a coach, Rick Bishop, who's done an amazing job. McNeil, the Olympic champion, world champion in the 100 fly, and uh, adds the backstroke gold medal to her resume, Claire Curzon there. Also really swimming well this week, still only 18 years of age. So to Molly O'Callaghan, 18. It's a new breed. Lovely evening in Melbourne. The Victorian capital, of course, uh, we're early evening, so the lights are coming on. You can't see the blue skies, but I promise you the skies have been blue today and they look like being exactly the same tomorrow. Next up, we've got the final of the women's 100 metres individual medley. It's time for the final of the women's 100 metre individual medley. Swimming in lane eight, representing New Zealand, Helena Gasson. Helena Gasson from New Zealand at 28 years of age, swimming in her first World Championship in final. In lane one, representing Canada, Mary Sophie Harvey. Mary Sophie Harvey, the 23 year old, she was eighth in the 200 medley in Budapest. In lane seven, representing Austria, Lena Krundu. Trondul from Austria in seven, the 25 year old. Personal best of 59. In lane two, representing South Africa, Rebecca Meter. Big moment this for Meter. She swam at the Olympics, finished 23rd in the 200, so didn't make the semis. In lane six, representing France, Barrow Gastodello. Gastodello. Great swim earlier tonight in that freestyle relay. Silver Millers from Abu Dhabi in this event. In lane three, representing Canada, Sydney Picro. And Pickrell's another who swam in the Olympic finals. She finished sixth in the 200, the 25 year old Canadian. In lane five, representing Sweden, Louis Hansen. Seven world championship medals in her career, Louise Hansen. Watch for her to go out fast through the fly in the back. And in lane four, representing Netherlands, Moritz Steenbergen. Steenbergen, fourth in the 200. She was a silver medalist in uh, the relay in Tokyo. So, an Olympic medalist. Now she'd like to be a world championship medalist as well. Women's 100 individual medley final. Steenbergen and Hansen, the Netherlands and Sweden, four and five. Canada and France, three and six. So, 100 metres only. 25 metres each of butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke and three. Hansen. Three-time gold medalist at World Short Course Championships in five. Even start here, Steenbergen in lane number four, Hanson five. First the butterfly, then the back. Yeah, Steenbergen really showed some class last night in the semi-finals. She's at the top of the yellow lanes, but she won't be able to match the opening 50 from Gastadello and Hanson. They're the pure sprinters. Look at Hanson staying underwater the longest. Also swimming well there in 80s. Gasson, they're right on that world mark. It might be Gastadello at the 50. And Gastadello it is who leads at the halfway point from Hanson and then Steenbergen. All right, this is where it'll change. Steenbergen building her way through this breaststroke. Hanson's edge past Gastadello and Gasson from New Zealand having the race of her life down the bottom of the pool. Let's
Let's watch for she leads now. Helena Gasson of New Zealand. This could be a boil over as they start to come through in the middle there. In lane number five, it's Hanson, Gascadello and Steenbergen. Steenbergen, Steenbergen it is. She wins the gold medal. Silver to Gascadello and bronze to Hanson. Steenbergen come home like a steam train, 57.53. She turned fourth with the freestyle to come and she overtook them all to touch them all first. Fantastic performance. It's her first individual world title. She's relieved with that one. A tight race that was. The lead changed about four times there. Off the block, Steenbergen a little bit slow there. She just jammed up that last stroke in that fly to back turn. Casadella was out quick like we knew she would be. Hansen there, also touching underworld record pace. And then Gasson from lane eight. Led after the breaststroke. And then it was a real dogfight on the way home. Here's the breast to free. Gasson closest to screen. She just didn't quite have it. Gasadello in the white cap, swimming well all week in Melbourne, but Steenbergen, we know how good she is in the freestyle stroke. Bronze medalist in the 100 free. Comes through and takes gold in the women's 100 IM. She is overjoyed. 57, 53, by a tenth of a second over Gasadello and Hansen, 57, 68. What a win! For Marit Steenbergen. That smile says it all. I know, Marit, you said to me last night after that bronze medal, you were riding that high. You're a world champion. Yeah, I'm, I don't know what to say. I'm just so happy and I cannot really believe it yet. I mean, you know, you've been putting in some amazing performances. It's been a massive year for you. Huge success at the Euros, came out on the World Cups, just so much racing. Has that prepared you coming into this, you know, at the end of such a long season? Just the cherry on top of the cake. Um, yeah, I've raced a lot and I'm doing a lot here, so I know that I can keep it up. And yeah, so I'm prepared for, for this. But yeah, to be swimming this fast, I did not expect that. Well, we've loved watching you do it. I know I certainly have. Ladies and gentlemen, she's a new world champion. Give it up for Baron Steenenberg. So, great excitement for the contingent from the Netherlands. Steenbergen taking it out in a tight finish. And these medals are really being shared around here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre this evening. Under the lights in this semi-open auditorium, watery auditorium at that. France, the United States, Japan, Canada and the Netherlands, all with golds. We move along now to the men's 100 metres individual medley final. It's time for the men's final of the 100 metre individual medley. Swimming in lane eight, representing Spain, Carles Colmarti. Colmarti from Spain. Swimming in lane eight, the 21 year old. In the relay in this week. One, representing Austria, Bernard Reitzhammer. 28 year old Austrian Reitzhammer for the best time, 51 78, lane one. In lane seven, representing Canada, Penley Knox. Penley Knox, bronze medalist in the 200 individual medley, 21 year old from Canada. In lane two, representing Italy, Thomas. And the Italian, 21 years of age, of course, the winner of the 100 metres backstroke in sensational style of Budapest. In lane six, representing Greece, Andrea Bazdeo. Bazdeo from Greece, he's the European champ in the 200 metre distance. In lane three, representing Canada, Javier Acevedo. Acevedo, the 24-year-old Canadian, appearing in his second World Short Course Championships, a PB of 51.38. In lane five, representing United States of America, Shane Cassis. Cassis, 
fastest man in the world this year in this event. And in lane four, representing United States of America, Michael Andrew. Andrew, the winner in Windsor 2016 and bronze in China in 2018, lane four. Field for the final of the men's 100 individual medley. The Americans in four and five, Andrew and Cassis. Cassis, he'll go out fast. We want to swim from in front. Watch for Andrew on the breaststroke. And Cassis gets off the block quickly there in lane five. Andrew alongside him in the red trunks there at Versailles in lane six. Yeah, Andrew stroking nicely through the fly. Gets on that turn on a full touch, 10.1 of the 25. So he's really putting a lot of emphasis on the first 50. Here is Andrew. Good turn there from Knox. He's a medalist in the 200 meter distance. He's going to be dangerous, but first at the 50 is check on. Making the most of the backstroke lick there, check on as they work their way up the breaststroke, the all important breaststroke. Yeah, check on was a medalist last year. He's still got a slight lead. Andrew's starting to move through. Cassis looks a little bit too far back. It's Andrew in front as they turn into the freestyle. Check on still there. I reckon check on still in front in lane number three, it's Acevedo. And down there in lane number four, Andrew, but it's check on. Check on the Italian takes it out from Acevedo. The bronze medal goes the way of Canada's Finlay Knox. Thomas Chekon, the backstroke specialist, now becomes the individual medley world champion. Personal best time, he upgrades the silver from Abu Dhabi and walks away with a gold in Melbourne. Off the blocks, Cassis, aggressive, athletic, powerful. Didn't quite have it at the end though. Check on, really made his move on the backstroke. This is the back to breast turn. They got a touch of warm on their back before flipping over and pulling out on their front in the breaststroke. He opened up a good lead. That's as good as lead as you'll ever get in this splash and dash medley race. Andrew pulled up at the 75, didn't quite, couldn't quite finish it off. Knox flew home, check on on the left there. Geez, the details are so important at this level, especially in this event, the most skillful of all the short course events. Italy take the gold medal, Canada, silver and bronze. Check on the gold in 50.97 from Acevedo and Knox. USA fourth and fifth. Who would have thought the USA would miss the podium with Andrew and Cassis? Well, missing the podium, certainly not. Gee. Big crowd in the stands. Big crowd in the stands here. Let's head down and hear Thomas, from Thomas, uh, that was an amazing race. Something we only see in short course, 100 meter IM. It looked like a lot of fun. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I really enjoyed this race. That's, that's here. Uh, I got uh, third, third, uh, got third, bronze bro medal, and so today I won. So I'm super happy with this. Yeah, to turn around back on top, we love to see it. Congratulations, mate, world champion. Give it up for Thomas Chekon. Well, we knew he was an outstanding backstroker, and that's where he took the lead in the backstroke leg. But uh, he was able to hold it together and take it to the line to claim the gold medal. Yeah, what he's proving is he's a big time racer, check on. He, he doesn't normally swim from the middle lanes, but he can execute when it matters. 
They count him in on him on those Italian relays. They're not afraid to put him in high pressure situations because he's a great, great swimmer. So the men's 50 metres backstroke final is going to be next on the program here. And um, if you weren't with us about an hour ago, there was a problem. There was a problem and uh, the race has been held over until now. In lane eight, representing Greece, Apostolos Christou. Here we go again, Christou in eight. He had a swim off this morning, so this will be his fifth 50 metre backstroke race. In lane one, representing Germany, Mark Ulrich. Ulrich in lane number one, semi-finalist in the 100 of Tokyo. In lane seven, representing Italy, Lorenzo Mora. Mora from Italy, silver medalist in the 100 backstroke here in Melbourne. In lane two, representing Trinidad and Tobago, Dylan Carter. Uh, Dylan Carter back in the pool. He's having a busy night here. 26 year old from Trinidad and Tobago. In lane six, representing South Africa, Peter Kotze. Kotze, the 18 year old, getting some good experience here, competing at the highest level now. In lane three, representing Poland, Kasper Stokowski. Kasper Stokowski, championship record in the heats, even quicker in the semis, so he's in red hot form. In five, representing United States of America, Ryan Murphy. Murphy, he won't be phased. Relaxed coming out. And in lane four, representing Australia, Isaac Allen Cooper. Big cheer for Cooper. He set a world junior record in the semis, the bronze medalist in the 100. So it's Dukovsky, Cooper, Murphy, Kutsi, and Christou all swam earlier without knowing that the race had been aborted. There's the field for the men's 50 metres backstroke final. Cooper of Australia, the 18-year-old, the veteran American Murphy in five. Dylan Carter will take it out very hard. So th this will come down to composure now, especially for Isaac Cooper. He's only 18. Look how long they're taking to get undressed. Murphy takes an age to take that jumper off. He's nine years older than Cooper. Cooper won the original race. So he could either be disappointed to be re-swimming this event, or he, he's got the swagger, he's got the confidence to reproduce this performance. He already beat Murphy earlier tonight. We'll see if he can do it again. Well, they've had time to return to the warm-up pool. The mind is what's all important. The body should be fine. at all. Cooper and Murphy in four and five across their Carter in lane number two. Lamoro is flying down there in lane seven as they turn at the halfway mark. Cooper leads it for Australia. He's underwater, still underwater. Up comes Murphy in front. Also Stokowski. Stokowski might take this. It looks as if it is. Murphy just over Cooper and Stokowski. It came down to the touch and the experience of the American was what told in the end. 22-64 and another goal for Ryan Murphy. Clutch swim there from Murphy. Delivers another goal to Team USA. And he came from nowhere with five metres to go to get his hand on the wall first. They held him for a long time off the start. Kotze totally missed it. Cooper flew down the first 25 metres, 
Boy, he is quick on top of the water, Isaac Cooper. But off the turn, here they come. Stokowski in the white cap. He had the best of the underwaters. But Murphy really mowed them down. There he's in that black cap. Cooper in the middle of them, so tight across the finish. This is that last stroke. Mora not far away, but Murphy. Tough to beat. Is the former Olympic champion. Takes the 100 and the 50 double now here in Melbourne. Relief. He gets it on the second chance. Ryan Murphy makes it a, another gold medal here. He won the 100, now he's victorious in the 50. Silver for Cooper and Stokowski. Only one one hundredth of a second back there, claiming bronze. What a race. Uh, Ryan, first of all, congratulations. Another world championship title. 100 last night, 50 tonight. It's obviously good to get the double. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's definitely not the way you want to win. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, hats off to, to Isaac. I think, you know, he won, he won the first one. So, uh, so it's, a, it's a little bit disappointing with the way things shook out. But, you know, happy, happy to get the win. Happy to add a medal to, to Team USA's count. And I mean, you know, you, you're so experienced. You've been kicking around. You've been doing this for a while. How important it does that experience play in something like that uh, as a professional athlete, being able to get your head back in the game? Well, I mean, uh, like, when, when that first race was over, I mean, it's over. So all you could really do is, is prepare for what's to come. And we found out, like, five minutes after that, this race was going to be at 9.10. So it's like, all right, what do I got to do to get ready for, to be ready at, at 9.10 p.m.? Well, you certainly did. Congratulations. Another world title. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ryan Murphy. Yes, experience counts, isn't it? He was uh, pretty pragmatic about it. Got to go out there and get ready for the next race. Now, the women's 1,500 metres freestyle. This is the fastest heat. Effectively, it is the final. Up next, the fastest heat of the women's 1,500 metre freestyle. Swimming in lane eight, representing Japan, Namba Miyu. Women's 1500, this is Namba of Japan in lane A, bronze medalist in the 800 freestyle. In lane one, representing New Zealand, Caitlin Dean. Caitlin Deans, at 23 years of age, she made the semi finals for the 800 back in 2018. In lane seven, representing France, Alexa Reyna. Here's Reyna, a 17 year old from France. She would have been buoyed by her teammates' win in the relay to open proceedings in, tonight. In lane two, representing Brazil, Gabriel Roncato. Roncato, the 24-year-old from Brazil, semi-finalist for the 400 in Budapest, 13th in the 800. In lane six, representing People's Republic of China, John Ki. John Ki in lane six. It's her first World Championship swim since three years ago. In lane three, representing Turkey, Denise Ertan. Ertan, the 18-year-old. She's not the youngest in the field, but she's not all that experienced. Lane three. In lane five, representing Turkey, Murfa Tunsil. Yes, the youngest in the field is Tunsil from Turkey. 17 years of age. And in lane four, representing Australia, Lonnie. Pallister. She's the golden girl at the moment of the Australian team. Lani Pallister, she's won three gold medals. The 400, the 800, and a member of the 4x2 freestyle relay team. Looking to make it an individual treble here. So the women's 1500 metres freestyle, the fastest heat, this should determine the gold medalist and probably silver and bronze as well once they combine the earlier heat results. Pallister of Australia, the hot favourite in four.
Away we go, 60 laps ahead for the swimmers. And once again, Deans in one from New Zealand. Ron Kata of Brazil in two. Ertan of Turkey in three. Pallister, Australia, four. Tunsil, the 17-year-old in lane number five for Turkey. Zhang of China in six. Rainer of France, also at 17, lane seven. And Namba, the 20-year-old from Japan in lane number eight. Well. We often see red-hot favourites when it comes to the 1,500 metres for women. Generally, that red-hot favourite is Katie Ledecky. If Ledecky's not there, well, you're not quite sure. Here, though, Pallister is an absolute standout. Yeah, she's having the best week of her life in the pool here in Melbourne. Three gold medals across the first two nights of competition. And I think she's going to have this one all her own way. Just needed to get off to a clean start. She's under world record pace for the first 100 metres. And she swam remarkably well back in August at the Australian Nationals. Her time there, 15.24. She shattered the Australian record on that occasion. The world record at that time was 15.18. And I was of the belief that she could really get close to that mark come Melbourne in front of a home crowd. But more recently, just back a month ago, Ledecky swam this event in the short course pool for the first time and took 10 seconds off the world record to go a time of 15.08.24. So I wouldn't think Pallister can get close to 15.08. It would be remarkable if she did. She's going to go out with that world record line probably through the first three or 400 metres or so. But uh, she'll definitely have not only a goal, but a strong time, a strong performance in mind here. She'll want to try and do a personal best and break her uh, Australian record, no doubt. She's a former world junior champion. She promised so much, and then her career almost came off the rails not so long ago. She missed out on four Australian teams by one spot. And as she indicated, you can take disappointment, but when it's one after another, it gradually breaks your heart into pieces. And she thought she'd had enough of swimming at the ripe old age of 19. But then she watched on television her teammates, her friends, competing at the Tokyo Olympic Games. And she got the drive back. She got the desire and she jumped back into the pool. She fixed her injury problems and her health problems. There were plenty of both of those. And ever since then, it's been an upward trajectory. And Lani Pallister is becoming one of the finest in the world. She's won the 400 here. She's won the 800. And uh, she's going to be awfully hard to beat, even in these early stages through 300 metres. It's a massive lead. Yeah, it's a huge lead already there. You can see on the left of screen, over nine metres now ahead of Tuncel. 17-year-old looking to try and claim her first world title podium. So there's a good battle going on for those minor medals. And also the time to beat from this morning is 15.49.15 from the American McMahon. So we'll see how the race progresses if uh, what's going to happen uh, in those silver and bronze medal winning positions. But at the moment, it's all Lani Pallister. As you mentioned, she won the three corresponding events at uh, the World Juniors in 2019. And she's looking to do the same here in Melbourne, which would be a remarkable feat in, uh, in the space of three years to individually be a top of the podium uh, in, the, in the corresponding events from the junior international waters all the way into the seniors. And you can see with that stroke of Pallister, really lays off her legs. There's not much kick happening at all, but she floats well. Got a really strong core. She, talk, she swims most of this race just like it's a like it's a pooing set of training, as if there's a pool boy between your legs, paddles on your arms, and just working the shoulders and the upper body. So it's an efficient way to swim. She does have the ability to kick at the end of the race. We did see her swim a great 200 meter leg on the 4x200 freestyle relay two nights ago to break the world record. In fact in that one so she's got range from the 1500 all the way down to the 200. 
Well, she was the bronze medalist in the 1500 metres in Budapest. So she will no doubt have her eyes on what is coming up next year, the long course championships in Fukuoka. And 12 months on, the Paris Olympics. She's already established herself as the top three in the world. And she will be working, working, working to make sure she stays there and possibly throws out a challenge for the great Katie Ledecky. It's a big call, I know, but uh, Pallister is doing everything right at this stage of her career. Yeah, she uh, she said she gets more comfortable the longer the race goes. So if she was to, to really perform long course, we saw her get a medal in the 15 in Budapest. She was looking really strong after the 800 meter heats to potentially get a second medal of the championships, but then got struck down with COVID midway through those world championships and, uh, and obviously didn't race the final. So she is the distance swimmer that's on the rise. And Ledecky moving into her fourth Olympics. Paris will be her fourth. She's won golds from London to Rio to Tokyo. It's unheard of, the longevity for a distance swimmer and the results and the consistency that we've seen from Ledecky. And her challenge is really going to come in the 400 metre distance with McIntosh and Titmus and, and even Pallister. She's, she's no sure thing to, to, to make the 400 freestyle on the Australian team in the long course pool because we do have a lot of depth in that event. Whereas the 800 and the 1500, she is a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more assertive in those ones. So, bottom line, if she was to have a crack at Ledecky, it'll be in this one. It'll be in the 1500. Yep. She's not too far away from the halfway mark now. So, Pallister well in front now, just updating the overall position. Tunsil, the swimmer from Turkey, alongside in lane number five. But the margin is massive. It's a massive margin between Pallister and the second place getter. And uh, then we go even further back so this field is being spread right out in third place it's Namba and uh, then in lane number three it would be Ertan but uh, coming down towards the halfway mark of this 1500 metres as far as Lani Palliser is concerned 31 laps to go and uh, while she's been counting up she'll be able to start counting down if she chooses to use the halfway point as that measuring stick down she goes now at the halfway point through in 737.76 through 750 metres. Yeah, if you were to use that halfway mark as a guide, she could be looking at something around 15.14 if she was to really even split it. I don't think she will, uh, will go that quick. Uh, she has picked it up though. You see her just increase the stroke rate there. So. A distinct move right at the 750, going up to the 800 now, 808, 66. Now, her winning time in the 800 freestyle a few nights ago was 804, I believe. Jeez, that's an aggressive first 800 metres at PB plus four. So she is swimming this one aggressively. You can see the crowd and her Australian teammates just waving her on now. Now, mentally, in this 1500, especially in the short course pool where there's so many turns, you can get a little bit lost in your own head in terms of the laps and the meters and where you're at in the actual race. Mentally, from a, that 800 to probably the 1200 meter mark, that's where it plays games and you do I push? Am I holding a good pace? The swimmers have no idea in the water exactly what sort of splits they're doing. They would have trained, they would have practiced, they would have counted their strokes, but there's no fact for them to know that they are holding whatever sort of pace that they need to hold. So they'll be looking to, for feedback from their coach and their teammates in the stands. And the Australians are waving her on. They want to get her through that thousand metre mark, and then she can really start to count down towards the finish. So it's Pallister in front, Amber in second, and Tunsil back there in third place. Fourth at the moment would be Caitlin Dean, the New Zealander out of lane number one. But it's a big, big margin. We'll keep our eyes on Pallister. Of course, we have to also keep our eyes on the times for second and third because this is the fastest heat. And it means that the times 
of the two slowest heats this morning will also be taken into account when we determine the final placings. And of most interest is the time recorded in the second of those Butler slowest heats by Kenzie McMahon of the United States. It was 15.49.15. 15.49.15. Now, well, Lani Pallast is going to uh, go well under that. But the question is, will that be enough to claim a medal? That's what we'll keep an eye on. Yeah, we'll get a good indication now. Pallister turns at the 1,000, 10, 12. So she's gone 509, 500 meter split. So she potentially can be looking at something around 15, 20. And those minor placings now, turning at the 1,000. That's Namba in second, 10, 32. And Tunsil at 10, 33. So they're very, very close, very similar, just slightly in front of the performance from McMahon this morning. So McMahon from Heat 2 this morning, well and truly in it at this point of the race. So Pallister swimming this race by herself effectively. She's in lane number four. We'll look at second place Namba. So she's some 20 metres back there. And 22 and a half metres for Dean. So Pallister with 17 laps to go. Now make it 16 laps, 400 metres. Yeah, the swimmers generally in this event, generally speaking, count up towards the 1,000, so they might choose to count laps or count metres, 100, 200, 300, all the way up to the 1,000. And then as a mental break, they'll start to count down towards the finish, 400 to go, 300 to go. And on this occasion now, Pallister coming in, she's got 350 to go. So she might count in 50 metre segments just to mentally feel and, and guide yourself towards the finish and increase your stroke rate, increase your kick, hold those streamline and uh, just get every ounce of energy moving forward towards the finish. So she's coming down towards the 1200 metre mark now. In the yellow cap, from the moment the gun was fired, she dived into the water. She's been out in front and just increasing this lead. It's Mia Namba, the 20 year old from Japan, in second place. She's the swimmer in lane number eight. You might get a glimpse of her passing Pallister going in the opposite direction. And then third would be Deans of New Zealand up there in lane one. There she is right now, the top of screen, Caitlin Deans. Yeah, Deans moving past Tunsell, which will be big for New Zealand. The women are swimming well. Two silvers to Fairweather behind Pallister in the longer freestyle events. Namba there at the bottom. Japan swimming in second. And in lane number three, Ertan, she's set. Back there in probably fourth place at the moment. Maybe just in front of Tunsil. So, eight laps to go. Inside the last 200 metres now, the 1500. And Lani Pallister is racing towards another gold medal. What a golden meet she's having, the 400 and the 800. And now she's dominating the 1500 here. Yeah, she's chasing the field down now as Pallister starts to get a little bit confusing. She's 50 metres ahead of all those swimmers there surrounding her. Turning second is Namba. Their time, 13.43. They're at exactly the same split as Kenzie McMahon from Heat 2. So a real virtual race happening right now. Namba and Deans, they do need to get a move on if they want to secure a podium finish. And Pallister starts to pick through the field. This will actually help her just pick it up. And she'll want to no doubt chase these swimmers down and beat them as she's got 100 to go. Effectively, she's got five to try to chase down. That's in lapping them, but it's going to give her something to chase. So inside the last 100 now. And Lani Pallister, there she is in the top of the yellow lanes, lane three. And yes, she's in front, despite the way it might look. 25 metre pool, she's lapping them all. She is absolutely dominant. It is Namba in second, but look at Lani Pallister go. Janelle, her mum, 
is delighted in the stands. Two laps to go for Pallister. As the clock ticks up towards the 15-minute mark, this has been a wonderful performance. It always was on the cards, given the time she took into this final. And Lani Pallister turns inside the last 25. And Pallister is going to bring home another gold medal. The first for Australia tonight. She's won the four, she's won the eight, now she's won the treble. Well done, Lani Pallister. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. The race on now, the second and third, bearing in mind the time of 15 49 15 that Kenji McMahon has already been recorded. Mamba. Mamba 15 46. So she takes the silver. Zhang gets up in a time of 15 51. She's going to miss out on the bronze. The bronze will go to an earlier heat swim, Kenzie McMahon. What a performance by Pallister. Yeah, it brings some emotion from her parents who have been here all week in Melbourne cheering her on. Three individual gold medals for Pallister on fourth in the relay. It's been a marvellous week in Melbourne. She lapped the whole field except for Namba. No doubt we've never seen that before in a World Championship final. The crowd, they've given up for Lani Pallister. Australian record, 15-21.43. A lot to celebrate. But boy, she was hurting when she hit the line. Well, she went out so aggressively under Katie Ledecky's world record for around 200 metres, which doesn't sound like much, but we know how good Ledecky is and just how much further in front of the field she generally is. And uh, Pallister, it was all about execution tonight, getting it done in the final. She's done it in all her swims so far here in Melbourne, getting much better at executing her best race under pressure. And what a star she's, she's become in Melbourne. Well, there we have the result of the heat. We know that that time of Pallister gets the gold medal. We know that that time of Namba gets the silver medal. Zhang finishes third, but that is not enough for the bronze medal. We'll see the overall result shortly, but there was an earlier heat swim, and it was Kenzie McMahon. Here we have it. Gold to Australia, silver Japan, bronze to the United States with McMahon coming through and grabbing the bronze from an earlier heat. I called it this morning before the race was swum. Great effort from McMahon. Oh, Lani Pallister, World Championships. Lani, magnificent. What a finish to your program here. You did the four, you did the eight, now you got the 15. I know it's your favourite. Must have been a great way to finish uh, your campaign. Yeah, I think I might have gone out a little bit. You know, it definitely felt a lot easier on the front end than I thought it would, and I think I paid for it a little bit in the back end of it, but I'm excited to come away from four from four gold medals, I think. So it's just been such an incredible meet. I'm really grateful for everyone here. We love it. And I mean, you went out fast. You went out underworld record time, right? Those first couple of laps. I was watching, I was like, she's gone out quick. You know, obviously not meant to. It's a tough race when you're out there in front on your own, though. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when you have races like that, you kind of have to look at the people next to you and try and catch them on the next part of the 25. And I was definitely working, trying to see if I could lap everyone. Um, it was, yeah, such an incredible race. I'm happy with the time. Definitely not content. So I can't wait to do it again in the future with more work under my belt. I can't wait to see it. And I tell you what, it's your last race. Is there anything you want to say to all these people coming out to cheer you on? Thanks, everyone, for coming. I hope you have a great last two nights. Ladies and gentlemen, Four-time world, champ, world champion, <laughs> Lani Pallister. Lani, four from four, she thinks. I think she knew. The 400, the 800, the 15, and the 4 by 2 freestyle relay. What a magnificent meet for Lani Pallister. Yes, daughter of Janelle.
Janelle Elford, who uh, of course was a medalist, Commonwealth Games medalist in Auckland, 1990. She would be enjoying this probably more than Lani was swimming the 15. Yeah, no 1500 back in those days. We've got another medal ceremony coming up now. It's uh, the women's 100 individual medley. The medal ceremony for the women's 100 metre individual medley. The medals will be presented by Chairperson of the World Aquatics Technical Swimming Committee, Mr. Craig Hunter. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Sweden, Louise Hansen. Winner of the silver medal, representing France, Beryl Gastadello. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Netherlands, Marit Steenbergen. There, Gasadello, Silver Hansen, the bronze on this occasion, and a new world champion in the women's 100 meter individual medley, Marit Steenbergen, having a great week here in Melbourne. Bronze medalist in the 100 freestyle now gets her turn on top of the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Netherlands. totaling just 100 metres, and she did it all in 57.53 seconds. She turned around and looked at the board and couldn't believe her eyes. All European podium there. The Netherlands, Sweden and France. A couple of medals tonight. France. Interestingly, the United States women weren't allowed to enter this event because they didn't have short course meters times in this event, even though they placed first and second in the 200 IM, Douglas and Walsh, they weren't allowed to race. So no doubt they would have been competitive. And um, the Australians strong across the women's side, but there is a bit of a hole in the IM events, but really strong performance there from Steenbergen. They'll be chasing that world record from Katinka Hoshu over the coming years, no doubt. It's a, a five-year-old world record, 56.51. So close to a full second quicker than what they swam there. Hoshu was just so dominant for a long period of time. Still competing, but just not at these World Championships.
the men's 4x200 metres freestyle relay final is just moments away here in Melbourne. It's time for the final of the men's 4x200 freestyle relay. Swimming in lane 8, Knox, Garcia, Karun, Acevedo, Team Canada. They've been busy, the Canadians. Finley Knox back in the water, Karun, the world junior record holder. Gazeev, in lane Acevedo. 1, Dominguez, Moyana, Gonzalez, the Stelis Montemblant. Team Spain! Team Spain, quite a young team. It's uh, a 20 year old, a 19 year old. And in lane about seven, that age. Vincent, Bretonov, Ivanov, Youngster, Team Bulgaria! Another young team in this final, the Bulgarians will swim from seven. Mitsin, the 17 year old, was great leading off this in morning. In lane two, Huang, Kim, Lee, Yang, Republic of Korea! Korea with lane number two here. Wang Sung Wu will lead them off, and Yang will anchor them. In lane six, Neil, Chalmers, Southam, Horton, Team Australia! Crowd can feel another gold medal coming. The Australians in six. Chalmers will swim second. Max Horden on in the three, anchor leg. Ciampi, Chetton, Rossetti, Contebone, Team Italy. Well, Italy here, and Thomas Chekon swimming the second leg after winning the 100 individual medley. Demonstrates his first time. Watanabe, Matsumoto, Mano, Matsumoto, Team Japan. Japan in five. It's a consistent four swimmers there. Katsuhiro Matsumoto, their strongest swimmer, will go second. In four, Smith, Foster, Julian, Kipler, United States of America. And the United States in lane four with the fastest time through the heat, 6.53.63, to be led off by Kieran Smith and brought home by Drew Kipler. So, the men's 4x2 freestyle, the United States and Japan in 4 and 5, Australia in 6, Italy in 3. The longest of the relays. Kieran Smith will lead off the Americans, trying to get a lead, Chiampi. The Italian team is strong on paper. metres freestyle relay. Underway now, the first leg swimmers, Dominguez of Spain, and then one of Korea, Kiapi of Italy, Smith leading off the United States in four, Watanabe of Japan in five, Neil Australia in six, Vincent Bulgaria seven, and Knox, the medalist earlier tonight, the Canada in eight. Yeah, this will be all over the place. Kieran Smith, the 400 metre champion, trying to take this one out aggressively. Always the leader of this relay team for the United States. And in the absence of Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte, we've seen some unpredictable finishes in this longer relay over the last four or five years. So Wang from Korea, the individual champion in this 203 from 12 months ago. He'll be looking to post a fast time. Korea will be good through the first two or three legs. But they just don't have the depth in this race as a whole. So Smith out in front, Thomas Neal of Australia starting to challenge. Well, we know that the United States always have plenty of depth. That's why their record in relays is so good. And they're out in front at the moment and currently on world record pace, but very early days. We're talking about the first leg swimmer as they go through the 150. Korea holding down second, Australia in third, and then Spain and Italy. 
And the margin is uh, not too much as we look across there. The USA and Korea and Australia up there in third. And they are really flying, turning it 48 low. Wang starting to challenge Neil, coming back. Smith's been great on this leadoff, and it's what's for the time. 140.9 for Wang. Super quick on the opening leg. In the water, that's Kim for Korea. Carson Foster gets his chance, and Kyle Chalmers of Australia. This is going to be interesting. The top three teams there, Korea, United States, Australia. Chalmers has been in excellent form here. In the 50, the 100, swimming the 200 now. They're still under world record place. Fourth at the moment, it's Spain with Yoli Yarns in the water at the moment. And still the top three under world record pace. Yeah, we don't see Chalmers race the 200 metre distance at this level very often anymore, but he does have one good one in him. They didn't swim him in the heats. They want the best of Chalmers tonight as they move through the first 100 of this second leg. The United States looking strong. Carson Foster there, 400 IMA. We know he's going to have a good engine over the last 100 metres. Korea also a really good swim up there from Kim, but we'll just see how Chalmers can put together this last three laps. Foster, the United States, Chalmers, pretty much in second place there with Kim of Korea. And they've got 50 to go before they get to the halfway mark. So the USA with a lead of seven tenths of a second. Korea back there in third behind Australia. And then you go back to Japan, followed then by Spain and Italy, Bulgaria, Canada. Let's see if Chalmers can chase. He looks a little bit heavy in there, Chalmers. Off that 53 semi, he is starting to pick it up. The world record line is well back. It's been a strong fun half. The United States still lead at the halfway mark. 1.5 seconds under, and diving in now is Trenton Julian. And it was a third of a second, the margin between the USA and Australia as they got to that halfway point. Korea it is in third with Lee swimming that lead. Julian in the United States, Southam, the kid, the 17-year-old for Australia. Yes, the youngest man in the pool, the youngest man in this final is Flint Southam. He was on that 4x53 relay last night, that one goal. But he's about a body length behind Trenton Julian, a well-experienced 200-metre swimmer. So we'll see what Southam can do. The anchor legs, the all-important finisher, it's going to be Drew Kiblet for the United States and Mac Horton for the Australians. We've seen Horton produce unbelievable performances to finish off this relay over the past couple of years, but Southam needs to push now. Julian, a strong third league swim here for the United States. They are still under world record. So is Australia in second place. Trenton Julian, though, has stretched the lead. South and Australia, as they come down to the 550. Up and back, back down the pool again for this lot of swimmers before we get to the last changeover. Yeah, this is an impressive performance from the United States. Southam's trying to move, but Julian's responded as well. They're well in front of that world record line, and Kipper was the fastest split this morning in the heats. So Southam, now we can see Julian. Southam moving through this last 25 metres. Desperation into the wall. There's still 200 to go, and that lead the leads down to just 0.3 of a second. And the stage is set for Matt Horton before his home crowd in his home pool. What can Mac Horton do? Swimming the last leg for Australia. He's out after Drew Kipple of the United States. In third place, it's career. Then it's Japan, then it's Italy. And the world record is still under threat here as they've got 150 to swim. It's the USA, Drew Kipple, out in front of Australia and Horton. Oh, the world record's going to get demolished here. Both teams are in front, but Kipple's extended that lead over Matt Gordon. Kibler is more of a 100 metre swimmer. He extends out to the 200. Horton, this is the shortest of his distances. I just don't think he's going to have enough. He's not going to have that change of speed to make a move on the United States. So we'll watch them. That leaves that 1.7 seconds. Kibler looks really good out there. And the Americans are getting excited. They can smell a gold medal and they can smell a world record. They've got 75 to swim now, the United States. They've got the lead out to two seconds. Kibler. Over Horton of Australia, Korea holding down third and then Italy. 
but as they turn at the 75 metre mark, the world record is about to disappear. You can get your pin out and write a new number in the book. It's the United States in front. Kibler, a wonderful last leg. Horton clinging onto the old world record for Australia in second place and Korea in third. But home they come. The United States, well in front of the old world mark. The United States, gold in a sensational time. 6.44-12, Australia the silver. And Italy storm home to claim bronze. race world record number six in the relays goes down in Melbourne this time the 4x200 freestyle to the United States they haven't held this world mark for the better part of five years and a real really well-rounded performance there from Kieran Smith Carson Foster Trenton Julia and a wonderful final leg swim for Drew Kibler Yes, big congratulations there. Coming down to the end of that second leg, Foster and Chalmers, some of the fastest splits of the field. Carson Foster, 140.4, absolutely flying. Chalmers couldn't get any ground off him, and that was the last changeover. Horden diving in for the Aussies. He's had some big anchors before, but he does prefer the long course. Cool Kibler there. Really clutch anchor in that position. Just so important to stay composed and execute your race when you know that you've got some clean water in front. And aren't they happy to claim that? They're off the podium a few times in the men's relays, but back on top now is the United States. So that winning time, 6.44.12, a new world record for the United States. Dropping the previous mark held by Brazil, 6.46.81. And th that had stood for some four years. Australia the silver, Italy the bronze. Well done, the USA. Well, we started the night with one. We're finishing with one. You guys, you smashed that. Two seconds off that world record. I mean, Kira, I think the smile says it all. Yeah, we were really confident with this relay. This is the relay that won us gold this summer in um, Budapest. So we knew that this was going to be a fast one. It was. And I mean, so much strategy goes into like the 4 by 2 Who helps you guys with that? Who makes those decisions and sort of puts it together and makes this happen? Yeah, we got the best coaches in the world. They make all the hard decisions. It makes our job easy. And like Kieran said, there's no three guys I feel more confident with. Amazing performance by all of you guys. Look, we got a little something for you. It's a check for $25,000, right? Not too bad. Ladies and gentlemen, we finished on a high. Please put your hands together for the incredible Team United States of America. It's been a good night for the USA. Kieran Smith, Carson Foster, Trenton Julian, and Drew Gibbler combining to set a new world mark. Here's 644.12, the old mark, 646.81, so two, nearly 2.7, 2.69 seconds off the old world mark set by Brazil as Kibler was challenged at the start of his final leg by Mac Horton, but he just proved too strong and he put the issue to rest quite early in that last 200 metre leg. Australia finishing in second place with the silver medal and Italy in third. Italy actually really flew home because uh, the Koreans were holding down third and then the Italians were able to storm home through uh, Conti Bonin. It's a beautiful sight here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre on the shores of Albert Park Lake, not too far away from the Melbourne CBD. And the fans really have been treated this evening. That's the end of the swimming action, but we do have um, medal ceremonies to come. In fact, we've got four of them. We've got the men's 100 individual medley. We've got that um, backstroke for men as well. Let's uh, head down and uh, have a look at the men's 50 metres backstroke medal ceremony with Bobby Hurley.
the medal ceremony for the men's 50 meter backstroke. The medals will be presented by two-time world champion, Mr. Bobby Hurley. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Poland, Kasper Stukowski. Stukowski of Poland. Winner of the silver medal, representing Australia, Isaac Cooper. Isaac Cooper, the silver medal. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing United States of America, Ryan Murphy. And Ryan Murphy makes a double gold, having won the 100 and the 50. My co-commentator, Bobby Hurley, doing the honours here. And Bobby, incidentally, it was 10 years ago to the day that he won his individual world title in Istanbul, the 50 metres backstroke, this event. So, uh, 10 years to the day, and now he's presenting the medals instead of receiving them. Isaac Cooper. Cooper has had a wonderful world championships. He looks just a, a little deflated here, though. And the reason is because of that problem at the start where he didn't know there was a problem. He swam his race and as Ryan Murphy indicated in the interview, yeah. Cooper actually was first home. So Cooper thought he won yeah. a gold medal. He comes away with silver. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of United States of America. Murphy wins World Short Course Championship gold medal number seven and he takes his overall tally to 11. Congratulations all round Murphy with more experience he spoke about what he had to do in the time between the aborted race and the rescheduling of this race that eventually decided the medals he was pragmatic he said I've just got to go out in the pool and start thinking about a brand new page I mean you can't help but think think that um, the 18 year old Australian looks just a little disappointed because as I mentioned there were four of them in fact five of them who didn't know the race had been aborted including this pair and Cooper swam it and effectively beat home everyone else including Brian Murphy, who was gracious enough to concede that in the interview. Silver medal for the 18-year-old, but devastated. Murphy, on the other hand, nine years older, had that experience to compose himself and move on. Cooper will learn from this. He's got a great future. seen anyone more disappointed than Isaac Cooper 
after winning a silver medal. Taking absolutely nothing away from Murphy. International swimming, it's not just about the body, it's about the mind as well. And Murphy was able to compose himself and get his act together during that interval of about an hour between the aborted race and what ended up being the final. With more experience, Cooper and Stokowski will be able to handle it much better. Now we'll move along to our next medal ceremony. It's the men's 100 metres individual medley. The medal ceremony for the men's 100 metre individual medley. The medals will be presented by CEO, Victoria 2026 Organising Committee, Mr. Geron Weimer. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Canada, Finlay Knox. So Finlay Knox is having a really good world championships here. Winner of the silver medal, representing Canada, Javier Acevedo. His Canadian teammate, Acevedo, taking the world silver medal. champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Italy, Thomas Chekhov. And Thomas Chekhov, the backstroke specialist, that's where he turned the race around. And this big man at six foot six, just under two metres, at 21 years of age, was able to convert his strength in the backstroke, ultimately into the breast and the freestyle to complete the individual medley. medalists of course with their own mementos, the original indigenous artwork. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Italy. Check on. And it's not just the Italians who enjoy hearing their national anthem. I think just about everyone does. It's one of the great national anthems going yeah. around. Thomas Check on the gold medal from Canada South and bronze to Acevedo and Knox. It's a big fellow, isn't he? Thomas Check on. Surprised a few people. He set that world record in the 100 metres backstroke in Budapest. But he's proving here he's got a lot more strings to his bow than just the backstroke. And it's going to be fascinating to watch his development at the next uh, Long Course World Championships in Japan in July and ultimately, of course, the Olympic Games in Paris 12 months on. Bobby Hurley's rejoined us. Magnificent effort, Bobby. Thank you. A bit uh, hot from that jog, but uh, check, check on, he's, he is the real deal. 
obviously long course, world, uh, world record holder in 100 backstroke. He uh, placed fourth in 100 back at the Olympics last year. It was crucial on those relays for the Italian team. And uh, unshaved here as well, so he's a very relaxed sort of character. Builds his swims through heats and semis and final. Renowned for producing his best in finals now. And uh, a real player in the individual medley races now as well. So, Czech on and the Italians, especially on the men's side, having a great world championships. The Canadians as well, always frequently visiting the podium. Asimito and Knox, it's Knox's second medal of these championships, which is a, a very, he is a very underrated IM swimmer. Canada second and third. No doubt would have preferred a gold medal, but uh, that's a really good result for the Canadians. And, uh, two of their younger stars. As we look across the pool, now, the women's 1500 metres for the ceremony. Lots of people still in the stands. They'll enjoy this one. The medal ceremony for the women's 1500 metre freestyle. The medals will be presented by Swim Oz Hall of Fame inductee, Ms. Dawn Fraser. Winner of the bronze medal, representing United States of America, Kenzie McBarr. Winner of the silver medal, representing Japan, Mion Namba. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Australia, Lonnie Pallister. Lonnie Pallister, four-time world champion, four gold medals in four days, here at the Melbourne World Championships. Mum's very proud, and Lonnie's relieved. And there's Dawn Fraser. The great Dawn presenting medals. Kenzie McMahon from the early heats this morning. It's rarely occurred at this level for a medalist to come out of one of the morning heats. She swims so well there to claim the bronze. And Namba from Japan, second medal of the championships. It's uh, on the podium in the eighth and the 1500 metres freestyle events. And here's Dawn Fraser, she is Lani Palster's godmother. You can see how close they are. Acting as a real mentor in and out of the pool to Lani and the whole Palister family. And the results are showing. Oh, this is lovely. Dawn Fraser has been on the podium for gold medals so many times. She won the 103 at three Olympic Games. And for the ceremony, Lani said, please come and join us. This is a beautiful sight.
a magic moment. A magic moment here in Melbourne. It's the first time in more than half a century that Dawn Fraser has been on the podium for medals. And this time for a goddaughter, Lani Pallister. Better watch the flags. Lucky they're electronic these days, Mike. Well, Lani just loved that. Dawn Fraser is now 85. And she won the gold medal at the 1956 Olympic Games here in Melbourne in the 100 freestyle. She won in Rome in 1960 and again in Tokyo in 1964. There she was all these years later, sharing Lani's success, a golden moment. championships for a long time. Those people in Australia now will remember Lani Pallister's results with those four gold medals, but I think more than anything, Dawn Fraser and Lani together will be a lasting memory. And you won't have to look, for, look far tomorrow in the newspapers to find a photo of that. Yeah, big week for Pallister. Big week for the Australian team. They are now sitting second on the medal tally. Strong night for the United States. 12 gold medals now across the four days of competition. Australia with nine. Pallister's got four of them herself. Known as Al Dorney. Swimming royalty. Well, that is the scene here in Melbourne. Bright lights everywhere. None brighter, though, than here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. We aren't quite finished yet. We have one more ceremony to go, and this is for a world record. The men's 4x2 freestyle relay. The medal ceremony for the men's 4x200 metre freestyle relay. The medals will be presented by World Aquatics Bureau member, Mr. Sammy Warman. World Aquatics Bureau member, Mr. Zue El Mufti, World Aquatics Athlete Committee member and Dolphin alumni, Mr. Daniel Kowalski. Winners of the bronze medal, Italy. Matteo Gampi, Thomas Chekhov, Alberto Rossetti, Paolo Contimoni. Winners of the silver medal, Australia. Thomas Neal, Kyle Chalmers, Flynn Salver, Matt Horton. World champions and winners of the gold medal with a new world record, United States of America. Here they come, Kieran the world Smith, record holders. Carson Foster, Trenton Julian, Drew Keebler. What a team performance that was. Foster with one of the 
fastest splits of the field. Second fastest in fact, 140.4, just 0.1. Slower than what we saw from Chalmers. Kieran Smith got them an early lead. 141-0. He's gonna be one of the favorites in the individual 200 freestyle. Foster will have the 400 individual medley tomorrow. That's his pet event, Trenton Julian there, receiving his gold medal. And Drew Kibler anchored them home. They smashed that world mark by 2.6 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of United States of America. been a good night for the United States. They win three gold medals. Katie Douglas in the 200 metres breaststroke. Ryan Murphy in that 50 metres backstroke. And of course here in the men's 4x200 metres freestyle relay. Overall though, there's been a Fair spread of the golds tonight with uh, France, Japan, Canada, the Netherlands, Italy, and Australia all winning. The United States with three to kick away on the medal tally. Yeah, they've really responded to the challenge of the Australian team. There's the 12 medalists. World record. The Australian team also got under that world mark of Brazil but uh, unable to seal the deal. And that's the sixth world record in relay events that we've seen in this pool at these championships. There's only been one individual world record, but six relay world records have gone down, which is quite a surprise. I don't think anybody would have predicted that coming into these championships. So the swimmer's doing a really good job in Pretty cold conditions to be honest, especially as the night goes on and the sun goes down. The wind starts to come through that chilly Melbourne air, but uh, it's not affecting the swimmers once they hit the water. Really good racing. It's been an exciting World Championships. Really exciting World Championships, Bobby. Four days down, two to go. But plenty more medals to be decided. Maybe more world records. Kyle Chalmers, really good to see Kyle Chalmers happy. He certainly wasn't so happy when we last saw him at an international level. He was quite reclusive, but he really seems to be at peace with himself now, and his swimming has been magical. There was a lot to enjoy this evening. Nine finals. As I mentioned, the United States getting more than their share of the golds. But great to see so many other countries sharing the spoils as well.
first time silver for the Australians. And the Italians, big finish for the Italians to storm home and get the bronze medal. for the photos so that everyone can remember them in years to come. What a night we've seen though, Bobby. Plenty, plenty of highlights here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Yeah, we've got things kicked off with a world record to the French team in the mix. 4 by 53 relay. Manadou swimming a crucial leg to deliver France the first gold medal of the championships. Following that, the long breaststroke distance, the United States gold and silver to Kate Douglas and Lily King to continue to add medals under their medal tally. And Diaceto, we've seen him win world titles before, but never in the 200 breast. He claims gold just outside of world record time. McNeil, she claimed that world record, her own in fact, defends her title in the women's 50 backstroke. Before we had some controversy on the men's side, and then Marit Steenbergen claims her first world title in the women's 100 IM. And Thomas Cecon, the Italian star, thumbs up. Another goal to Italy. In the rerun, an upset. Not quite an upset, but a different result to what we saw the first time round. Ryan Murphy claims his second individual goal ahead of Isaac Cooper of Australia. But Pallister, she, she finished the night with a gold medal to Australia and uh, an Australian record for her fourth gold of the meet. The longest relay of them all, the men's 4 by 200 free, another world record to the United States, Smith, Foster, Julian and Kibler delivering the gold medal once again. A magic night here. A medal tally looking like this with the United States claiming three golds tonight, now three clear of Australia and 24 medals in total. Italy in clear third place now, having won gold tonight, a total of nine. Canada two and South Africa two. And uh, plenty of silver and bronze medals have been shared around the competing nations as well. After four nights of finals, here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. This is what is ahead of us tomorrow morning, day five, and uh, we'll start with uh, those medley relays, the women's and the men's, the heats there, the 4x50s, uh, the women's 400 individual medley, and then the men's. And we'll also have right down the bottom there the slowest heats for the men's 800 metres freestyle. And that, as we've seen tonight in the women's 1500, could result in a medal, you never know. What a scene, what a day. We've enjoyed it. Can't wait for tomorrow. Please join us then. Thank you.